Hey, welcome back, indie lovers, to another episode of Indie Choice Picks. Today, we have the awesome Michael Derrick on the show. If you've seen him on Twitter, he is promoting his comic book, Grayscale. Now, at the time of the interview, there were 12 days left for his campaign to end. Now, we're sitting at five. I ran into some difficulties. I'm not going to explain the story to you. But enjoy the interview. If you like what he's doing with his character, go over to the Indiegogo page, back it, show him some love. All right, on to the interview. Yeah. Hey, Michael, thank you for coming on to the show. Indie Choice Picks is the show where all indie creators come on, tell us a little bit about their uh, comic or idea, whatever it is they're working on. I see currently you're running a uh, Indiegogo campaign. You're a little over halfway there, right? Yeah, we actually uh, just got over uh, halfway funded, so I think we're at 52% now, so uh, doing pretty good, uh, making good progress, so uh, hopefully we can get there uh, before the uh, campaign ends. Nice. You got 84 backers, and you're about 12 days uh, from your finished goal, so we're going to try and help you get there. So I'm going to turn the mic over to you, tell the audience your name, who you are, and the name of your comic, and take it from there. Go for it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so uh, my name is uh, Michael Derrick. Um, I'm a comic book writer. Uh, uh, currently crowdfunding my first campaign or my uh, second campaign, uh, Grayscale Welcome Glitter City. I actually did my first Indiegogo last year. Um, it was a sci-fi action comedy book called The Abductables, and uh, that was illustrated by uh, Iron Sights artist Evi Canales on a lot of uh, really cool projects. Um, and But this year I wanted to do something a little different. I wanted to do a, a superhero book. Uh, it is called Grayscale, Welcome to Glitter City. It's a 60-page full-color superhero comic book about a trash-talking vigilante who controls the power of karma. So uh, he operates out of uh, Glitter City, which uh, is basically a fictional version of Las Vegas. Uh, I describe it as Las Vegas cranked up to 11. Um, <laughs> so it's... Uh, going to be home to a whole host of uh, crazy, outlandish, and deadly villains for him to face. And uh, basically everything I love about the superhero genre just uh, all packed into those 60 pages. So uh, this will be a uh, complete story told, uh, but I'm hoping it's the first of many. Um, I really uh, put a lot of uh, thought into the character and the backstory and stuff. So I'm hoping, uh, you know, we'll get a chance to tell the, a really cool overarching story. Um, but yeah, so uh, definitely check it out. Uh, like you said, we're uh, we've uh, you know we've got a, li a little around ten days uh, left to go in the campaign. A little more than that um, at fifty two percent. And uh, while we are at eighty one backers, I should mention this: um, when we get to a hundred backers, all those one hundred backers will be entered into a random drawing, and the winner of that drawing will get a, a free indie comics bundle uh, sent directly to them as soon as. Uh, yeah, so uh, it'll have uh, books uh, from crowdfunding, Alterna, any kind of indie book. So uh, just another incentive to uh, back early because uh, you don't want to miss your spot there. That's cool. Yeah, uh, that's kind of my uh, pitch for the book. <laughs> that's cool, man. So um, <laughs> it's funny you say that uh, Glitter City is actually kind of like a alternative version of Vegas because I'm looking at your uh, – actually, let's do this right now. I'm going to share my screen so that everyone can see what we're doing here do that let me know when you can see my uh screen takes a minute uh, okay i can see it now cool so <clears throat> glitter city is yep. basically a uh kind of play on Las vegas as i saw the High roller here, you got the Bellagio water fountains and all that stuff. And I was like, hmm, Glitter City. Because I looked at it, I was like, that's Vegas. And then I looked up and it says right here, welcome to Glitter City. Yeah. So like, ah, that's cool. So how did you come up with the idea of this concept mm -hmm. idea? Yeah. <laughs> um, well, uh, for Glitter City specifically, you know, I, one of the cool things about superhero, the superhero genre is uh, – you know, you, you you deal with all the different tropes, like the secret identity and the arch nemesis. And uh, in a lot of cases, the uh, city that the superhero operates out of is almost like a character unto itself. You know, like uh, 
Gotham City with Batman or Metropolis with Superman. So I definitely wanted to do something unique. I did. I didn't want it to just be, you know, the generic. Oh, it's a dark city with the dark secrets. Like I, I wanted to kind of go in the opposite direction of what people might expect. And you know, surprisingly, I felt like uh, Las Vegas, which of course, obviously, is one of like the most uh, interesting cities in America. It's uh, there's really not that many uh, uh, cities like fictional like superhero cities that are based directly on Las Vegas. So I thought there would be a lot of room to uh, do some interesting things with that. And uh, it, uh, it, it kind of definitely played in with the uh, whole theme of karma, you know, with the uh, main character's power. So it, the idea just kind of came from there. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's, it, it is based on Las Vegas, but um, you know, it's going to have a lot of unique things to it that uh, you can only have in a, a superhero book. So. Okay, cool. Tell us a little bit more about your main character, the uh, trash talking vigilante you mentioned before. Yeah, so uh, Grayscale, uh, the K stands for Karma. Um, yeah, he's. Uh, I describe him as kind of like in the same vein as like street level uh, heroes, like Daredevil, um, maybe a little bit of Batman, uh, maybe a little bit of Punisher, though he's not necessarily going to be going out and, you know, murdering people left and right, but you never know. Right. Um, but, uh, yeah, he's, uh, I, I thought it would be a good uh, contrast to have him, you know, be that street level character. He wields his uh, trusty truncheon and, uh, you know, cracks people over the skull with it. Um, so, I, you know, I wanted to keep him as grounded as possible to contrast with his karma powers, which, you know, could be kind of mystical and kind of like, all high and mighty, like, oh, he controls karma. Well, you know, you don't, you'd almost expect him to be like a character, almost like the specter or something, you know, like this godlike being. But really, he's a down to earth guy. He just happens to be able to see people's karma. And, um, you know, that, that's how he uh, finds the bad guys, so to speak, because, you know, he can see who the good guys are and who the bad guys are and uh, deal with them accordingly. So. Okay, now, just like all the other superheroes that you talked about, I'm assuming this guy has a secret identity that he keeps under wraps. Yep, uh, yeah, and we'll definitely uh, play with that uh, dynamic. Um, you know, all, all those tropes do kind of, like, come with the territory of doing a superhero book, um, but I didn't want to just do, like, the greatest hits of, like, you know, the superhero genre, uh, but, you know, stuff like that is inevitable. But I do think we have a pretty unique uh, spin on his super uh, secret identity. Um, you know, I don't want to get too much uh, into it now. I don't want to give too much away. But, uh, you know, we definitely do explore that in the book. And uh, we get to know the man behind the mask. And uh, I think uh, he's got a pretty interesting dynamic. And specifically, uh, we'll explore his relationship with his love interest, which you see on the front cover there, the uh, blonde lady. Right. Um, so, yeah, it's... Uh, I think uh, she'll she'll play a very important role in the book. Okay. Now tell us a little bit more about the plot. And you haven't really touched on that yet. So I'm a little little curious as to where where you want to take the story and what the story is about. Uh, yeah. So I uh, I really wanted to just like dive right into the action with this uh, first book, Welcome to Glitter City. So it's not. Uh, a traditional like uh, you know story where it starts with him like as a normal guy and then he has his origin story and he gains his powers you know that way we actually start the book right in the thick of the action and he's already been a uh, a hero for like a, about a year at this point okay um and we'll kind of you know you know so yeah we'll kind of jump into the action there and then we'll give hints at uh you know how he got to uh, become uh, the hero that he is now but um, specifically for this first book, Welcome to Glitter City. Um, basically, he uh, it's all about consequences, which I think is fitting for uh, the theme of karma because um, let's just say uh, Grayscale, he uh, messes with, with the wrong guy and he kind of, uh, inevitably, uh, unfortunately for him, kind of unleashes hell on himself and uh, gets a whole host of uh, crazy villains uh, uh, coming after him. And, uh, you know, we see some of the villains uh, on that front cover there. Um, so yeah, there's going to be a lot of crazy fights, a lot of, uh, crazy action, uh, crazy powers. And, uh, you know, he's definitely going to have his work cut out for him. Sounds like fun. Sounds like fun. All right. So go into the inspiration, the, the, the idea where you, where you got 
the concept for this um, comic to be created? Like, I know a lot of people, when they write something, it's from a personal life experience or there's been a story that they've been working on for years, so on and so forth. What was your inspiration for Grayscale? Um, well, I had the, uh, I always thought karma would make like a good power, like for a character. Um, never really had like a specific, a uh, specific character in mind for that power. Um, but you know, when the, uh, crowdfunding boom kind of kicked off in like 2018 when, you know, you had all these great characters coming out like, uh, you know, cyber frog and Bigfoot bill and lone star and red rooster and all that. I was, I was just thinking, you know, I, I want to be a part of that because it really reminded me of like the, uh, the launch of image comics back in 1992, where you had all these, uh, artists go independent and kind of release their own, you know, create their own books. And so I was thinking, you know what, if I was, uh, I kind of wanted to put myself back in, uh, 1992. And it was like, if I was one of the image founders, like who, what would my character be? Cause I'm, you know, I'm a big spawn fan and I, you know, I love Todd McFarlane. So I was thinking, you know, Todd McFarlane had spawn. Rob Liefeld had young blood. What would my uh, edgy, you know, edge lord 1990s antihero be? And uh, so the ideas kind of spun off from that, and then eventually, you know, I, I melded that with my karma idea, and you know, it just I, I, at that point it was just like oh, we're off to the races. So yeah, that was kind of a, the uh, origin of the character. Okay, are you working with a group of people, or is it just you? You have a little team, or if you do, give them a shout out. Let them let the audience know what their part is in the story or in the project. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so I am the writer of this book, um, and then uh, we have a fellow named PK uh, doing the artwork. Um, he he did a, a western book that was on Indiegogo uh, a while back called Ballad of Dusty Tortillas, which is about to uh, be fulfilled, I believe. Um, and then for colors, we have uh, Eugene Bativu. He's colored a bunch of uh, crowdfunding projects along with other uh, other comic book uh, properties. Um, really, I'm a real big fan of his uh, color work. He, he's done uh, Hero Blood of Patriots and Magic Cop and a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, for letters, uh, so last year with the abductables, I actually lettered that myself. Um, but this time around, you know, I didn't really want to have to do that again. So I was like, you know what, let me just uh, put the money up front for a, an actual like professional letter. And right. as you can see with these preview pages, it uh, definitely paid off because uh, we have James Reed uh, doing the lettering and he's a uh, industry veteran. So he's uh, bringing a nice uh, air of uh, professionalism to the project. And, uh, you know, it, I also wanted to have him on board because I wanted to give uh, Grayscale these unique uh, word balloons, kind of like in the same vein as like Deadpool. Right. Um, so, uh, yeah, so he was he was able to, uh, you know, you know, come up with those really cool, uh, unique uh, word balloons uh, for the main character. And then um, other than that, we had um, Brandon Diaz uh, from Magic Cop, the artist from Magic Cop. He did the uh, logo for us. Um yeah. And so, yeah, that's, that's pretty much our creative team. Um, we, uh, yeah, that's kind of the main, uh, the main roster. So uh, we do have a perk. Uh, if you want to be listed with the uh, creative team, like in the credits page and on the front cover of the book, we do have a perk. Uh, it's called the executive producer perk, uh, where you can actually be listed along with the creative team. Um, so definitely uh, get in on that. And that comes with a whole bunch of other stuff as well. So. All right. Sounds good. So, you are about 12 days out from getting your uh, getting the project funded. Um, you said it was about 60 pages long? Yep, uh, 60 pages of story. Um, right now it's going to be like a traditional uh, like floppy comic, um, though we are kind of pushing the upper limits of how many pages you can have in a floppy comic. So um, it'll probably, I think the most you could do is 64 pages. So it'll be 60 pages of story plus, you know, maybe some pinups or, you know, some extras in the back of the book. Um, but we do have a stretch goal to um, uh, upgrade the book to a, like a full on trade paperback. So if, if we do get to that, uh, we'll definitely add some pages and uh, add some more bonus content as well. But definitely uh, 60 pages of story. And there's a lot of story within those 60 pages. Now, after you've completed this campaign and you fulfilled, you fulfilled your orders and stuff, what's, what's the future of Grayscale? Are you going to do more stories with the character, more plot arcs? What's, what's next? Yeah, that's definitely, uh, that's definitely the hope. Uh, you know, I, I kind of look at, uh, 
I think this comparison was made, you know, for other crowdfunding books, but I'm kind of looking at it uh, in this way, uh, you know, because, you know, the nature of crowdfunding comics is not like, you know, you go to your comic shop every week and you pick up, you know, a new issue every week or every month. Uh, with crowdfunding, you know, there's an investment both with money and with time. Right. So for, for me, I wanted to, uh, I want to add as much value to the book as uh, possible since, you know, people are going to be waiting for it. So it's important to me while I do have this overarching storyline that I want to tell, I want each book to uh, be kind of self-contained in a way, uh, you know, has a three act structure, you know, each book has its own villain. But my hope is that uh, this Welcome to Glitter City is just going to be book one of, you know, uh, hopefully seven books, uh, which uh, will tell a uh, overarching story. But, you know, each book will uh, be self-contained as well. So hopefully, uh, hopefully this will be the first of many. Sounds good. Sounds good. Well, we're coming down to the end of our time together. I'm really liking this uh, idea. Um, can I tell the audience some of the kind of, uh, you kind of went over before, some of the perks and stuff that you get with the comic. Um, tell them a little bit more about what else they can get, or did you already kind of touch on all that? Oh, yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I really wanted to keep, you know, the perks uh, pretty simple. You know, I didn't want to, you know, have too much, you know, junk, uh, so to speak, you know, just keep it really bare bones. Uh, so you can get the main book, uh, 60 pages uh, for 15 bucks. Um, we also have uh, add on perks for an ash can. Uh, it's uh, called Dark Ages. It's an original side story uh, written and drawn by Grayscale artist PK. Uh, so you can add that at checkout if you'd like. Um, the uh, the big perk that we just added recently, like in the last couple days, is actually we're selling Donald DeLay original artwork, um, which uh, Donald DeLay, you probably know him. Uh, he's the artist uh, from Cash Grab, Vestige, uh, Brutus the Badass. Uh, you know, he's he's been making waves in uh, crowdfunding for the last couple years now. Um, cool. So, um, yeah, he works uh, mostly digitally. So uh, the fact that we actually got, like, a uh, legit like original piece of uh you know physical art 11 by 17 um that's no small feat and uh this actually will come with a copy of the book itself so uh, this is our highest level perk um only obviously one of a kind um so if you uh if you like to collect original art or if you never had original art before uh this is uh you know people will tell you that this is as about as low as it gets uh for um you know price wise for a piece of original art so uh you know, definitely get in on that. Uh, definitely don't miss your chance because yeah, it's, and we, you know, you get to see the scanned version of what's, of what it looks like. We got our, uh, our boy grayscale battling, uh, the villainous repo. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, looks awesome. And, uh, yeah, it looks even more awesome in person. Sounds good. All right, guys. So if you guys liked uh, what Michael has going on here with Grayscale, go ahead to the website. The link is in the description. Go ahead and back it. Um, he has 12 days left with 84 backers. And hey, you get to go ahead and support a cool indie project because I'm going to do it. Cause it sounds like something fun. I need something, something new to read. And I know that's what a lot of people who are watching right now. So um, before we go, I like to do this with all people who come onto the show, creators, artists, writers, doesn't matter who you are. Um, I like them to give advice to people who are watching who may be aspiring comic book artists and they're trying to get their feet wet with crowdfunding. So what's the one piece of advice you can give people watching that'll help them do a successful crowdfund? Um, I would say, you know, promote the book as far in advance as possible. You know, uh, I definitely wouldn't launch, you know, you try to try to build as much hype as you can uh, leading up to the project. And, uh, you know, I know a lot of us, uh, you know, writers and artists, you know, we, uh, we kind of tend to be introverted, but I think it's very important to, uh, you know, get out there, talk to people, uh, do shows like this, uh, do live streams and, uh, just, uh, don't be, don't be afraid to promote yourself. Uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, it, it might not be the most comfortable thing, but you know, it, at the same time, if you're proud of the work that you're doing, uh, it's, it's easy to, uh, uh, you know, talk it up because, you know, it's something you believe in. So, uh, definitely just don't be shy about promotion and, uh, you know, get the word out uh, as soon as possible, you know, as early as possible. And, uh, yeah, just, uh, you know, kind of get to know people and, uh, yeah, uh, help spread the word. 
Sounds good, Michael. Well, thank you for coming on to the show, man. I'm really looking forward to seeing thank what you. you guys do uh, further with Grayscale. Sounds like a pretty cool original concept and idea, and it sounds like it's going to be a really fun story. So, guys, once again, if you like what he's doing, guys, go to the link in the description, hit on it, take a look, watch the trailer, look at some of the artwork, and if you're feeling really good about it, hit one of those perks. I mean, you say it's $15 for a, a copy? That's yep, uh, fifteen dollars. Yep, sixty pages. Uh, uh, bagged and boarded, signed by me, and shipped in a Gemini mailer. Oh, well, there so, you go. Great value, up. and uh, you know, like I said earlier, this is my second campaign. So, yeah, I've been through this uh, once before as far as fulfillment. So, that's cool, man. That's actually um, the cheapest price I've seen for just a book. Usually, people start it off at twenty, twenty-five bucks, but fifteen dollars for a sixty-page book—that's not bad, dude. I'm I'm actually digging that. So that's another perky, guys. Yeah. $15 for a yeah. six-page book. <laughs> that's awesome. <clears throat> well, Michael, thank you for coming on to the show again. Um, like I thank said, um, everything that the audience needs is going to be in the description. Go on and click it. And, um, yeah, man, I'm liking it. So thank you again for coming on the show, and I will see you on Twitter, dude. <clears throat> yeah, thanks for having me. No problem, man. Have a good weekend. Thanks, you too. Well, that's it for this interview. Thank you guys for watching. If you like the creative idea, the link to their campaign is in the description. You know, when I started off with the Indie Choice Picks videos, I wanted to give a platform to indie creators everywhere. So if you are an indie creator and you have a project that you're working on and you want to come on the show, find me on social media, preferably Twitter or Instagram, and let me know what you're working on. Also, a big shout out to Silver Tiger for giving me that awesome intro you saw at the beginning. I'm Will at Heroic Studios, and remember to support indie creators everywhere.